Manga Wido. I'm Hayate Machida. I have an important person in my life. Her name is Mio. Mio and I have known each other since childhood. We lived across the street from each other and went to the same elementary, middle, and high schools. I've had a crush on her for as long as I can remember, but I've never been able to tell her how I feel. We became closer when I was a senior in high school, preparing for the college entrance exam. Unfortunately, my father died in an accident, and Mio took over for my mother, who was so exhausted that she couldn't do anything. And she supported us by cooking meals and going shopping. It's okay if you leave some of the food. Please, eat it if you feel like it. Thanks to Mio's devoted care, my mother's smile returned to her face after a while. And she brought me good luck, I suppose. My father died suddenly, so I gave up college and continued working part-time. And a year later, the movie theater where I was working at the time gave me a full-time job. Now that things had settled down, I couldn't let Mio help us forever. Mio, you don't have to come here so often anymore. Why? We're just childhood friends, right? I feel bad. So, what if we're not just childhood friends? Let's get married! I'll support you the rest of my life! She suddenly proposed to me! I was so surprised that my jaw almost dropped off! Uh, are you okay with a guy like me? You may not realize it, but you've helped me so many times. Mio! That's how we ended up going out. A year later, when I told my mother we were getting married, she was more than happy, even more than I was. After Mio graduated from college, we officially got married. We were really lucky up until that point. But the third year after becoming a full-time employee, I was transferred to a different location, where I met that guy. On my first day of work at the new location, the employees who came to greet me at the store entrance had very listless expressions on their faces, which made me feel uneasy. And sure enough, I'll be starting here from today. I'm Machida. I greeted them, but in a small voice, Hi, was all I got. The manager is in the back, so please, go say hello. Understood. I just had a bad feeling about this. When I entered the room I was told to, inside was a man in his late 30s, reading a comic book while laughing hysterically. This guy is the manager? I was shocked, but called out to him. Excuse me, I'll be starting here from today. Huh? Shut up! Who? Uh, I'm Machida. I'll be starting here today. Ah! You were wondering why I'm skipping work to read comic books, weren't you? No, that's not true. You don't understand! They're making a movie out of this piece next time, so I'm reading it to study beforehand! Uh... Huh? What's with that answer? Thah! Another useless one. That's why I'm so busy. I can't be doing this anymore! He didn't even tell me his name, so I looked at his nameplate, and it read, Manager Kitamura. Who's gonna be motivated with a guy like him as their boss? By the way, when I looked at the title of the comic book Kitamura was reading on the internet, there was no mention of it being made into a movie. To my anxious despair, I'm Kanazawa. I'm probably the same age as you. Nice to meet you. In the office, a man named Issei Kanazawa sitting next to me spoke to me. I was so anxious that I immediately became friends with Kanazawa. During break, I asked Kanazawa what kind of man Kitamura was. Kanazawa had been excitedly talking about his favorite movies until then, but suddenly, he lost his enthusiasm. You should avoid eye contact with that guy as much as possible. After that, he fell silent. Then one day, an incident happened. It was when I was concentrating on my work at my desk. I heard Kitamura's loud voice and the sound of him slamming his desk. What? You don't need me to do this, do you? Can't you even understand that? I heard Kitamura's loud voice and the sound of him slamming his desk. What's going on? I looked over to see an employee being yelled at. Can't you write something up that won't draw attention from the top? Use your head! I'm sorry. Don't you think so, Machida? What? Uh, about what? How was I supposed to know what they were talking about? You're really useless, too! Well, you're just a high school graduate after all. That's right, I'm leaving this job to you. This is your chance. Everything's a learning experience, here. After saying that, Kitamura put a stack of papers on my desk. Bring it to me when you're done writing, and left. I looked at the stack of papers and saw that it was a report to headquarters. The male employee who had been yelled at came over to me and said, I'm sorry, these are documents that are supposed to be filled out by the manager, but please do it for me. Look, we've been having some problems lately, like the food expiring and the show not starting on time. What? But I just started working here. I've got some old reports on the shelf, so just finish them up like that. I'm sorry, but I'm at my limit. And so, the employee left. I had no choice but to finish it by looking at past cases, but I had other work to do. 
and ended up working overtime, as I was getting ready to go home disheartened. Wanna go for a drink? Kanazawa, who was also working overtime, invited me out for a drink, a rare occasion. Ah, uh, I feel sorry for that senior today. Does that kind of thing happen often? Yeah, I told you not to make eye contact with him. Every time you make eye contact, he pushes the work on you. Oh, that's what you meant. He's a real jerk. Not only does he yell at you, but he also hits things, and the company's equipment is always damaged. He never works the late shift and leaves on time. I've never seen him work in the first place. Why don't you report this to the top? I heard he's the president's lover's son. Huh? That guy's mother told the president that if he doesn't let him join the company, she would tell the affair to the weekly newspapers and destroy the company. So the president got him to join the company through his connections. Seriously? That's why he can do whatever he wants. He must have had connections that allowed him to become the manager. That's why it's useless for us to appeal to the higher-ups. That makes sense. After that, Kanazawa told me things about the inside of this company, and we talked about each other's personal situations as we deepened our friendship. After that, the work environment continued to deteriorate. That employee who often got Kitamura's work pushed on him suddenly stopped coming to work, and I turned into a target instead. Machida, you're just a high school graduate, so learn it like this. That became a common phrase, and I was forced to do a variety of jobs. For example, there are early and late shifts for the morning and late viewings, and the ratio of these has increased all at once. Even on the opening day of a very popular movie, when the place was flooded with people, Kitamura never came, and I always handled it. He even threw all the complaints to me, and the list went on and on. Kanazawa and the other employees followed up, but they were so reckless that they overloaded my capacity, and every time I made a little mistake, ah, high school graduates like you are so useless! He would verbally abuse me like that. I still had a reason to endure. In fact, last month, I found out that Mia was pregnant. When I reported this to Kanazawa, Seriously? Congratulations! That's amazing! You're a father! He was as happy as I was. Not only that, he took over the late shift so that I could go home as soon as possible. My colleagues, seeing me do my job no matter how much Kitamura harassed me, all came to support me as well. As the days went by, Mio's belly was growing steadily. One day, while I was working the reception desk at the venue, Hey! It's from the hospital! Kanazawa called me over, and I answered the phone. Are you serious? Mio had been admitted to the hospital and was in critical condition. Kitamura would come at me if he saw me fiddling with my phone while on duty, so I tried my best not to look at it, but I checked in a hurry to find messages from Mio saying, My stomach hurts and... What should I do? I'm bleeding! Damn it! What have I done? Machida! Calm down! Just get to the hospital! It's gonna be okay over here! Yeah, thanks Kanazawa! With Kanazawa's words, I rushed to Kitamura's office. My wife has been admitted to the emergency hospital. I need to ask for permission to leave early. Huh? What's the rush? You're not the one giving birth. What's going to happen to your shift if you leave? I felt my gut churn instantly. Worst case scenario, I'll have to fill in for you. If you leave early, you're fired. You understand? This guy is more concerned about the shift than people's lives. I saw no reason to endure anymore. All right, you can fire me. What? Excuse me. I ran out of the room. When I returned to the office, Kanazawa said, I called you a cab, go, and sent me off. The warmth of Kanazawa and my colleagues almost brought tears to my eyes. A few hours after arriving at the hospital, the child was born safely by C-section. It was a cute baby girl. Mio had fought hard on her own for a long time, and I took her hand in tears. I'm sorry I couldn't do anything. Mio smiled at me and said, now it's like I have two babies. After a while, when I calmed down, I remembered that I had just been fired. I've got to find a new job. While I was thinking about that, Are you okay? Kanazawa, whom I had told the location of the hospital just in case, came to visit me on his way home from work. And he told me a surprising thing. I'm thinking of reporting Kitamura to the headquarters. What? But if you do that... This one time was a wake-up call. I can put up with his complaining and slacking off, but this was a matter of human life. We can't stand it either! I see. I agree! Later that day, we went to the head office and told them all about the absurd shift schedule and recordings of verbal abuse. When we told them that if they didn't take care of the problem, we would have to consult an outside expert, the initially reluctant HQ person became flustered. I understand. I will take the appropriate measures. And made a promise. The response was unexpectedly swift. From the following week, Kitamura stopped showing up at the site. 
Instead, someone from headquarters came and started to investigate. As a result, in addition to his power harassment and skipping work, he was found to have taken away customer perks, and they even found violations of the law, such as auctioning off premium tickets for the stage greeting. As a result, although he escaped arrest, Kitamura was demoted, given a pay cut, and transferred to the head office, probably to keep an eye on him. Three months later, I heard that Kitamura had also gone on a rampage at the head office, causing the police to be called, and that he had been dismissed on disciplinary grounds. After that, the workplace became lively and full of energy after Kitamura left, and almost no mistakes were made, making us number one in sales among affiliated movie theaters. And finally, our work was recognized. I am Kanazawa, and I will be your manager from today. I will work even harder than before. Yes, Kanazawa had been charge of the site since then, and he officially got promoted as a manager. I think I could endure any hard work for him. And so, we were finally able to win a peaceful work environment. Welcome! May I see your ticket, please? If I could only devote myself to my job, working in a movie theater would be my calling. Alright, let's welcome our customers with pleasure today, too.